Sixty years ago, in October 1962, China attacked India and has left behind an impression on the mind of generations of Indian policymakers that the defeat that it inflicted on Indian troops in the high Himalayas is a lesson that India should never ignore. And the fact that if China is pushed once again into a situation where India is faced with a Chinese military invasion, if at all, the results could be equally resounding for India and have geopolitical implications. But is that really the truth? Is that really the case that India of 2022 is the India of 1962? I personally believe it isn't. And here is an account of what led to 1962, the conflict, and how it has impacted on a variety of issues that concern Sino-Indian relations. When China chose to attack India in October 1962 and Mao Zedong thought the time had come to teach Pandit Nehru a lesson, there were reasons for China to take this stance. First was the growing stature of Pandit Nehru. Internationally, he had become the go-to person for the third world emerging as a leader of the non-aligned world and Pandit Nehru therefore chose to ignore the offer of friendship or an alliance by the United States because just like Mahatma Gandhi carved his space in history with his non-cooperation movement, Pandit Nehru wanted to leave his legacy as the leader of the non-aligned movement. But before he could finally complete his long drawn out mission to achieve that legacy, a number of things happened, particularly with respect to India and China. True, Nehru was busy settling many issues that newborn nations have to attend to and settling the borders was not quite his top priority. In fact, Pandit Nehru's approach to dealing with China and his increasing presence on the Himalayan boundary via Tibet took a lower order of precedence than issues that he decided that he must attend to whether it is to carve out the states of modern India, whether it is to address the issues of regionalism versus the building of a nation state, or whether India's stature in the world. How Pandit Nehru decided to address the China question was to give in to China's aggressive politics and encroachments in areas like Tibet, which was really the buffer between mainland China and India's Himalayan boundaries, by accepting China's growing footprint in Tibet. By 1952, China had more or less occupied most of Tibet, and rather ruthlessly so. Pandit Nehru, sadly, went on to have the Panchil Agreement with the Chinese, which was basically about five points of Indo-China relations. So what in effect is India's contested boundary with China today was really India's boundary with Tibet in the early 50s. But China went about its own ambitions after 
the Communist Party came into power in 1949. And one of the things the Chinese led by Mao Zedong did was decided to dismiss all earlier boundary arrangements and dismiss all agreements that had existed in the past, which gave India and Tibet a certain boundary, both in the area now known as Arunachal Pradesh, and that has the McMahon line, which separates what is Arunachal Pradesh today, which was earlier known as NIFA, Northeast Frontier Agency, with Tibet, which in effect now is under Chinese control. And in Eastern Ladakh, where the Aksai Chin area, which was occupied by China, has three boundary lines. One which India claimed, one which with China was willing to accept, and one which has come to stay after the 1962 conflict between India and China. And from 1993, with a few adjustments, it has come to be known as the line of actual control, where in 2020, Indian and Chinese troops had aggressive standoffs and leading to a fight to death at places like the Galwan Valley. But why Aksai Chin for China? Why McMahon line between India and China? As far as the McMahon line is concerned, in 1913-1914, there was the Foreign Secretary of British India, Sir Henry McMahon, a former Lieutenant Colonel of the Army, who was good at drawing maps and lines. He had helped carve out the boundary between what is Pakistan and Afghanistan called the Durand Line and therefore took upon the role of defining a boundary on the southern parts of Tibet so that Tibet remains a buffer between the Chinese Empire and the British Empire. Even today, 60 years after the Chinese invasion of India in October 1962, the question still haunts many Indians as to why China had to attack India. What did China achieve? And what has been its impact and long-term implication? Not all the blame, if you look at it objectively, can lie with China. Because by 1960, temperatures had begun to run high with the escape of the Dalai Lama into India. And even then, the Chinese had proposed that while the McMahon line that separated Nifa from Tibet and now separates Arunachal from Tibet and China was more or less acceptable to them, the areas on the east of Ladakh, where today the LAC runs, and previously the Johnson line, the McCarth line, the McCartney line all ran was something that the Chinese were willing to talk about and settle on a swap basis which meant that the Chinese keep Aksai Chin where Indian presence was not known to have been there at least for a few decades before the 1962 conflict and India had a habitated presence in Arunachal Pradesh, which was then NIFA. So why shouldn't India keep that area and allow China to keep Aksai Chin? Nehru was adamant that map or no map, make my own line is my boundary and I'm not willing to negotiate anything about Aksai Chin. Nehru was riding high in the global forums as the leader of the non-aligned world and perhaps took his own stature too seriously. So the Chinese Premier Chao Enlai, who visited India in 1960, 
handed Nehru once again the swap proposal. Nehru dismissed it. Because by then, India had published maps by about 1955 that showed Aksai chain as very much a part of India and of course Arunachal and everything also as part of India. Really, India wanted everything and not to give anything to the Chinese based on the assumption that these were lines that were drawn during the days of the British Empire. So India, having inherited the modern India from the British, also inherited its boundaries, not willing to accept that with the boundaries came boundary-related problems. However, the Chinese having offered the swap proposal and having been rebuffed by Nehru despite calls for Hindi Chini Bhai Bhai were quiet about it and began to plan to teach Nehru a lesson. So the Soviets who had got very close to the Chinese after the Chinese support for Russia's agenda to embarrass the Americans in the Korean Peninsula. The Russians gave a tip-off to the Chinese that there was the likelihood of a major global crisis with the Russian deployment of missiles in Cuba near America's coastline near Florida. And when the crisis took, takes place, all of the world's impressions and interest would be formed by what would happen between Soviets and the US. And nobody would really bother about a boundary dispute between India and China. And that is precisely what happened. So the Cuban Missile Crisis began around 16th October 1962. And on the 9th of 19th and 20th of October, the Chinese attacked India in large hordes, ruthlessly running over Indian positions, both at Arunachal Pradesh and trying to do the same in Ladakh. In Arunachal Pradesh, which is NIFA, there was a military disaster of the highest order. Nehru and Krishna Menon had placed their chosen man and lackey, Lieutenant General B.M. Call, better known as B.G. Call, as the core commander in NIFA, who had no idea of battlefield deployment or fighting because he was a man who had risen up as a spit and polished soldier from the logistics branch of the army. The Chinese played hell into Indian positions. Indian troops fought like tigers, running out of ammunition, ill-clad, ill-equipped. But when ammunition ran out, they got up and charged with their bayonets and even in some cases fought with sticks and stones. They fought very bravely, but they lost and they died. In the cold winters of the mountains, near Arunachal and in Nifa. But Nehru wept later when Lata Mangeshkar sang Mere Vatan Ke Logo.